Good evening to you all. I'm Dan. I'd like to welcome you all to the first of the uh, Atollo employability sessions, which is a series of events aimed at helping you get the job that you want. So there's eight learning events over the next eight Mondays, followed by a surgery or a one hour open session the following day. And that gives you the opportunity to connect with me even more and ask me any questions that you want. You know, we can discuss, we can share best practice, anything about recruitment and employability. I'm here to help you guys. I've worked in hospitality for a long time and I know most of you work in hospitality. So for the last 25 years, I started as a waiter back in the 90s, all the way through to the role of GM. I've come up against all the challenges that people face in their working lives. So the disappointment of not getting the jobs that I want, being told I'm not particularly good at something, a bit of career stagnation where I've been trying to move on and upwards, but it's not really worked for me. I've been made redundant from a hotel company. So I've experienced a lot of the uh, trials and tribulations of working in the hospitality industry. I'm also a recruiter. I spend a lot of time reading CVs, helping employers decide the candidates they want, what kind of things they're looking for in candidates as well. So having worked in the industry and now recruiting for it, it's given me a lot of uh, insight into helping people get the jobs they want and the career moves that they want as well. Also experienced the joy of getting the job that I want and getting promoted. So it's a broad spectrum of experiences in, in my time. Why are we talking about self-belief and confidence? When you're applying for a role or you're looking to move to your next role or you're looking for promotion, we need to make sure that our application is a true expression of us. The way we describe ourselves, our skills, experience, qualities and personalities. This will have a direct, direct impact on how we perform when we do a job application. So the way we feel about ourselves is also important in the way we express ourselves. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be talking about self-belief and confidence. Quite often people have a little bit of a difficulty with, it, with this concept. Things happen externally in the world, that's correct. But it's the way we think about them that creates our world. What separates sports people, elite sports people, and non-elite sports people, and certain types of sports people with others? Sometimes we've seen their public challenges, lapses in performance. Roger Federer, his tennis racket, is not better than Andy Murray's tennis racket. The main thing is his mindset. He's confident in what he does. He uses visualization to win the game before he's even played it. It's the same. We need to think, we need to be confident that we will be doing that job before we apply. Not wait to get the job to get the confidence. When we approach you know, job seeking, it's not just about CV. It's not just about paying for the interview. It's not just about learning the company because you need to present yourselves in an honest way and present your skills and your qualities. And that all comes down to mindset. See this guy in the photograph? He's not looking too happy, is he? You feel as though your career is stalling. You're really not happy at your present workplace or you've been made redundant or you've had to leave your work for personal reasons. You're sitting in front of your laptop staring at the next application on the screen. This is your 100th application after 99 rejections how does this make you feel powerless frustrated frustrated desperate desperate feeling the need to cry <laughs> yeah cry emotional like you're just exhausted and you mm. don't have the energy to keep going yeah absolutely yeah heavy is a big one now imagine you're opening a letter or an email you know it's from the recruiter or the hirer for a job you've applied for. You had an interview, you felt it went well, and a week later you've received this communication and it reads, congratulations, we would like to offer you the position. Now, how does that feel? Amazing. Absolutely. Proud. Proud, yeah. Finally, you know, finally. <laughs> finally, yeah, relief. Empowered. Empowered. Exciting. Excited, brilliant, yeah, good stuff. But many times when I've been rejected, you're just there not being able to work or be productive. So you just feel that you're wasting your time and you're getting older. Yeah. And then, I don't know, probably it's something mental, but you just feel fresh and young. Great stuff. The reason why I did that to you all, if you think about it, is you created those thoughts and feelings. It wasn't a real situation. I just asked you to sit back and imagine it. And that's to 
explain to you what I meant by our thinking creates our reality. So public speaking can invoke real, even in people who are the most qualified, the most skilled, it can invoke real physical sensations in the pit of their stomach. It can make them feel nervous, shivery. And that's the power of the mind. There's no external factors. Everyone who's there wants them to do well, but you still get that feeling of nervousness, of fear. And that's our own mind creating that, that thought and sensation. Nobody else is creating it. So between the age of three and 20, we go through a rapid, a very rapid and quick transformation where our development is, is affected by a huge amount of external factors. We are conditioned, influenced, nurtured, all by other people and external experiences, not by ourselves. We're almost shaped by what happens to us. And it creates and solidifies who we are. You know, it makes us who we are to a degree. Let's have a discussion about what people have told you you can or can't do. I will, I'll give you an example from my career. So I was a assistant manager in a small hotel in Glasgow city centre. I was what in the old days used to call assistant manager F&B. So it's one up from a supervisor. And the general manager who I worked for, she had gone down to open a new hotel in London, in Islington. A few months after she'd gone down there, I got a phone call and she said, would you like to come and be bar and brasserie manager down in this hotel? My first thought was fear. My second thought was excitement. My third was, I'm going to speak to some other people about it. The GM who had taken over, she sat me down and she said, I don't think you're, I don't think you're ready for it. I don't think it's the right move for you. It made me feel quite, quite bad, quite, you know, quite negative about it. And it took me quite a long time to persuade myself again from being excited when being offered a job to take it because someone had planted a little seed of doubt in my mind that I was capable of doing it. And I did go down there and I did do the job and it was tough because I didn't have that much experience, but I managed to work through it. So has anyone got any examples of where someone's told you you can't do anything or you're not good at anything? I have a story that's slightly different um, and it's kind of speaking to where I was talking about my where my issues with confidence comes from. Um, I had joined a uh, management development program in Canada um, and it was a property in the middle of the mountains uh, so everyone lived in staff accommodation and I was fresh out of university so I was 23 at the time um, and I was the only manager under 35. Oh, nice. And one of my, my director, the, one of the first things that she said to me was that you are not allowed to socialize with a single person on, who's not a manager. And I was like, and she's like, she's like, cause it's not appropriate. You're a manager and their staff. And I was like, okay, well, all the other managers are 35 plus and married and I'm 23 and we live in staff accommodation. So, you know, I had nowhere really to, to make friends or socialize outside of this situation and it was to a point where every time I was seen talking to an employee I was told why are you socializing with that person it's not a manager um, and it actually really shook my confidence because I felt like I couldn't relate to the employees because I couldn't even get to know them on a personal level because I wasn't allowed to socialize with them and I also felt very disconnected from the leaders because I was much younger than them and I wasn't really given the opportunity to learn from managing a team. So I actually, that year and a half that I was there was one of the biggest struggles that I've had to work through. Um, but, it, but, it, but it really did kind of shatter my confidence because there was literally nothing that I could do right when it came to my relationship with staff. And even if I had gone back saying, well, you know, this is my situation, can you tell me what I can do, um, her first response is, well, you should probably stay inside your house. And I was, <laughs> I was really confused. So, so, you know, that really shattered my confidence for me as a brand new manager going mm -hmm. into trying to learn how to manage people my age and a lot older than me. Yeah, I ended up hearing from people like later in time when I kind of gave up on the fact that I wasn't gonna make any friends and I started secretly meeting people that I thought I would enjoy being with. Um, they had said, oh, you know what, you, you know, it was really hard for us to trust you as a manager at first because you seemed like a real hard ass. Mm. You know, you seemed very overconfident, like you, you didn't have time for us. 
when in reality, that's the opposite. I've wanted what I wanted. That's just what I told I had to do. A uh, long story short for everyone who loves my personal stories. I cried a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did um, about six months in, I did call my mom and I did yeah. kind of tell her my situation and said, you know, I have no idea what I should do. Yeah. Um, and she was very uh, hotel manager about it because she has hotel management experience. <laughs> and she was very just like, well, you have two choices. You can break your contract yeah. try and find a job at another hotel and explain to them why you couldn't stick out your year and a half contract or you put your head down you work through it you learn from your experience and you leave with so uh, with a huge wealth of experience that you would have gotten anywhere else and you just hope for the best afterwards and you and you know on your it, it was the day on my 18th the end of my 18th month my director didn't even say bye to me i just washed my hands and i left the hotel and never looked back so your mum reinstilled your confidence. She she did more yeah, maybe yeah. not my confidence, but my yeah. fact that I could stick it out and I could deal with it and yeah. I could come out a better person, whether it was awful for that year and a half or not. Yeah, and I bet you learned from the the whole thing as well, didn't you? And I and I did. You know, I I tell people now, like especially you know, it, it kind of gives me a lot to talk about in interviews as well because I tell people, you know. I've been able to gain the experience of dealing with very difficult situations. I've been able to gain experience being a young manager and having an understanding of what people in those positions can go through. Thank you yeah. very much for sharing that. It's great. That's, thanks. Man. So as well as people influencing you, it's the way you talk to yourself. Now, when we're looking at job applications, describing ourselves and employability, just when you think about, oh, I'm not very good at that or oh, not very good at that, or I've not done that, or I don't really understand that. I've not really, you know, generally, we're harder on ourselves than the truth, unless we're supremely confident, in which case confidence is not an issue. So we tend to, I read personal statements on CVs and all parts of CVs, where it feels as though the person is, is kind of not fully expressing themselves. And if we start practicing our self talk and you know, what people have told you in the past that probably isn't relevant, but still sneaks up. Some of you may have heard of the chimp paradox, um, which was a, it's a model described to um, help us understand the human mind. And it was uh, devised by a guy called Professor Steve Peters, who's a consultant psychiatrist, and he specializes in the function of the human mind. We've got three parts to our, to our brain. The inner chimp, this is the emotional part within the brain that acts for us when, you know, without permission, it just goes ahead and does it. The other part is the logical part. So the rational part, the compassionate, humane part, the human within, what makes you, you. And other kind of um, theories about the brain, you, it's also sometimes referred to as the ego and the inner being is another way of thinking about it. These all contribute towards the way you express yourself. And when you write something, be very, very careful when you write something about yourself from what, which part of your brain it's coming from. Be aware of your, the state of your mind when you're writing your personal statement or you're writing your CV or you're describing yourself on the telephone to someone. The one thing I would say when you, when you go away from this session today is to get to know your chimp. Think about that part, that emotional part of your brain and say to it, talk to it. Because a chimp that's been briefed by the logical part of the mind tends to be a lot calmer and makes better decisions and expresses you better, expresses yourself better and helps you describe yourself better. Taking you back to this slide, that's what we mean, turning ideas into reality and why our thinking creates our reality. It's not some crazy scheme because I know things happen you know there's a global pandemic going on but the way it affects us is the way we think about it now unfortunately it's quite negative but you, you know you do it with positive things as well but if we all think about you know doom and gloom then unfortunately that's that's what it creates for us guys thanks a lot thanks, great, great of you all thanks for coming and I'll see you all again hopefully make sure make sure you get signed up for all the rest of them yeah